this man belongs to one of the oldest trades in the world up north they call him a tatter down south he's known as a totter but whether he tats or whether he tots he's certainly very useful when it comes to getting rid of things come to think of it Britain would soon start looking very untidy if the scrap men ever went out of business. Not that they will. Scrap's too important. That housewife selling that old cooker probably doesn't realise that salvage scrap goes to make up nearly half the steel produced in this country today. There aren't many of these totters left. They're all dealers now, and the trade's becoming highly mechanised. Scrap flows into yards like this from all over the country. It's collected on contract from the big factories by a round-the-clock road service. It pours in from the local authorities. It's brought by the totter. It comes in by the train load. Getting rid of junk. Yes, all's grist that comes to the mills of this industry. Once you get to the yard, the routine is the same for everybody. Each vehicle has to go to the weighbridge and weigh in at once on arrival. Each driver then gets his weight ticket. A valuer inspects the load to decide the quality of the scrap. The driver is then told where to dump his stuff, different grades in different parts of the yard. This done, he reports back and he's weighed all over again, so they know exactly how much he delivered. He's then paid its value according to its grade. Oh, our totter's done himself proud with this lot. These are brass turnings from a local factory. They're valuable and kept separate. He gets a much higher price for them. Now he takes his main load to one of the dumps. Surprising what you come across around here, isn't it? Anybody feel like a nice family saloon? These are what you could call used car bargains. Now here's a delicate little toy. That crane lifts an electromagnet, and that magnet lifts a cast iron block weighing a ton. When the block's in the right place, you turn off the current. Watch your toes now. Wham! This is the way they break up cast iron so it's small enough to go back into the furnaces. Just watch this. Oh, there's that old cooker. I wonder what that good lady would say if she could see it now. Little does she realise that it's starting a new lease of life. Yes, here it goes. Before you can say goodbye, it'll be on its way back, as like as not, to the very place it came from, to be made into new steel again. Now here's a remarkable machine. Yards like this have several of them. It's a press, but what a press. The scrap goes in at one end, a loose, uncontrollable mass of rubbish, and it comes out the other all nicely parceled up. Uh, isn't that our cooker? <laughs> it was. This is all very well for an old cooker, but hardly the way to press a suit. And here go the little steel cubes, off on their next journey. Now you come to think of it, you couldn't feed odd bits of scrap into a steel furnace. It wouldn't make sense. It isn't until stuff is crushed up like this that it has any real practical value. And that's what they do in these places. They get the scrap ready to start all over again. Do you take one lump or two? Here's that collection of used cars again. Amazing what you can salvage off these. You can go along and make an offer for anything. Well, as we all know, sooner or later in the life of any car, there comes a time when there's really not much sense in renewing the license. So it ends up here. And once they pick it up for the final run back to the steelworks, it might as well give in without a struggle.
but it can't go back just as it is. It has to be properly made up. And there's a special machine for that, too. This man operates a monster that can take a family car, squeeze it into one piece, and then cut it up like a bacon slicer. Take a good look at this. That's the last we'll see of that car in any shape that we could recognize. No, it's a pity. Nice little job in his day. There she goes. Talk about a squeeze. Yes, this machine will cut anything down to size. This goes on all day long in this place. 10,000 tons or more of scrap are bailed up and moved back to the steel mills every week. Sometimes the turnover is so quick that the scrap comes in one morning and is crushed, bailed up and out again by the next day. goes making up a train load to the South Wales border. That old cook is in that lot somewhere. This is Ebber Vale, the big steelworks in Monmouthshire. It dominates a whole town and this is where that train load of scrap ends up, ready to start at the beginning again. These are open hearth furnaces that make steel from iron and scrap. 12 million tons or more of scrap can be used up a year in its making. The scrap is put into boxes that move along on rails in front of the furnace. The charging machine then delivers the boxes into the heart of the furnace. This is a seven day a week operation. There's no let up in a steelworks. There we are, there goes the scrap back where it started. It doesn't matter how familiar you are with it, this remains one of the great sites of industry, symbol of one of man's basic conquests over nature. That is steel being made in a high pressure converter. And this is what happens to it. It's rolled thinner and thinner into sheets. From Ebervale, it moves on to a factory in five ton coils of steel, thinner than cardboard but as tough as the process that made it. It might have gone off to one of the big car assembly lines, but it's been sold to a refrigerator factory where they use a lot of steel sheet. So the old cooker is taking on a new life. It's going back to domestic service. And where do you think that particular fridge ended up? Yes, you guessed it the first time. And to think she thought she'd really got rid of that old cooker. Well, maybe she had, in a way. But don't forget the totter. He's made a mental note. He'll be back again in a few years.